So now I want to talk a little bit about keying. And probably the easiest way to demonstrate that is to use what you commonly see in television where they call it a double box shot. So I'm going to put everything in black and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go to memory and that allows me to recall some memories. And what I have programmed here for you is something called a two box setup. So if I push this it's basically recalling that right there and it puts it in the preview for you, it's loaded, it's ready to go. And what I have done is essentially I've changed the keyer priority because I now have these two cameras that I'm sending to the keyers instead of graphics and a camera or a channel of animation, whatever it is, I've changed it. I have on keyers three and four a, a two camera sources. And if I want to change the camera before I take it on the air, I look at that setup and I say, oh, those aren't the cameras I want. How do I do that? I simply come up here to the top, destinations. Destinations, remember the top is your six keyers. One, two, three, four, five, and six. The rest are all auxes. You don't have to worry about these. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And they show you a little key icon with the number next to it. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So below that is what's assigned to it. So for instance, the camera number, if it's camera, is the number that corresponds below it. Therefore, here three has camera two assigned to it. And I know it's camera two because if I look at the ME program row right below, camera two corresponds with the preview below it and, and the assignment above. So these are the same. Remember, the, the, they're not labeled, but they are the same. So camera two right here. If I want to change that to say color bars, well, here's color bars over here. I could send it color bars and now you can see I've moved color bars into this key three, which is what's basically sending over there. Keyer four has another camera, camera one. So I'll change this back on keyer three to camera two. There it is. Now it's ready to go. All I have to do is hit cut and I take that on the air. And the way that works is because I am working with different layers here. I've changed my priority. So I know that I have to do different priorities to get things above each other. So for example, my next move might be to grow the white box. So that means the right box has to be on top of the box on the left. And therefore, the keyer 4 is above keyer 3 in this instance. If I shrink it down, now if I go to grow the box on the left, you're going to see the keyer priority shift over here in this monitor. Watch what happens. Three and four change. See, I'll go back and show you again. Three and four change. If they don't change, this is what happens. See how now it's behind it? So that's why it's very important to coordinate everything. You're not going to want to shrink right from the left to, to there. You're going to need to go back to the setup first. So what you would do is you would typically grow the right, shrink the right, then grow the left, shrink the left, or you could start with the left, shrink the left, and then grow the right and shrink the right. And then when you're done, you simply would take it off the air, and then there's one more button over here that resets it, to get the keyer priority back to where it should be. And now you can see it takes away the sources as well and replaces them with what was there originally. And that's important because some of our show opens have transparency in the graphics package and because it's a file that's playing back, that transparency needs to be loaded into a keyer or else it's just going to be black video on the air. It needs to be above a video source, in that case the background. So that's what we're essentially doing when we play a show open. A good example of that Let's go to our clips one and take a look at the opening tees. If I want to put opening tees over top of, say, the PTZ in this case, I ready PTZ, take that, that's my background. Now I don't want to change the background. These are additive, so I can always add on. See, I'm adding them over top of each other. I don't want to do that, so I want to take these away. The only one I want to put in next 
is I see I've got my open assigned to keyer 3. So I'm going to change to keyer 3. Notice it's going to cover it up. I don't want to switch the background at the same time, so I'm going to turn background off. I only want to switch keyer 3 on. I'm happy with this background, so I don't want to change the background. If I cut this on... Coming up next on Current OC. Now I've got an animation playing, and I'm going to pause it. Notice I have device controls here with the clips, and the way they work is they allow me to control what I'm doing with that clip media playback. So in this case, I've paused it. I can scrub. See, now I'm scrubbing a few frames. I can go faster if I want to go 10 frames, 100 frames at a time to get through a longer package to a specific point. And that's all very useful because I can set up a lot of control on these clip channels that move with the individual clips. They're remembered with the clip file itself. For instance, in this one, I have it auto starting, auto stopping. So when I take it off, it stops. Auto rewind, which means it will automatically rewind. And then it's going to automatically move to the next N. So A, X, R, N. A, automatic start. X is automatic stop. R, rewind. And next and it'll move to the next clip for me so I don't even have to worry about getting back into here um, what's my next package it's already going to be sending to here on deck for you so it's really really nice um, getting back to the layering so you can see in this case I've got transparency with the video built in and that's a video file so it's moving take it a step further I would build a macro if I wanted to bring in a graphics file over top of all of that. So now I'm happy with this build, I want to add something to it. I'm going to add a CG, CG channel A, and that's in keyer 1. Keyer 1 has to therefore be above keyer 3, because if you think about it, the background is my camera shot, then I have the background animation on top of that, and then the graphics with the text on top of that. So now I'm going to bring that in and that's your final build. That's what it looks like on air. So that's a lot to think about when you're trying to build your and stack your keyers. And that's why we've customized that for you and pre-programmed all of that. And why this is significant to know is because the graphics operators right here are going to be controlling this part of the board. Even though you have it right here, they're going to try to help you out a little bit. And they're going to make sure that they're sending A, the correct graphic, if it's for instance, an, an, a tease or a name, let's do a, um, a lower third. They're going to have that all set up so that all they have to do is then hit their command and bring it in. And there it is. So if you think about our keyers, the way they, they would build that is you would have all of these here moving on and off. And so you can tell that they're in a movement right now because the green play light is lit. And even though it's paused, it's in a paused state because it's waiting for them to take it off. You know there's something going on because it's lit up here on this row. It's orange. It's, it's, it's telling you, hey, you know, caution. Because they're taking control of the board. They're only button pushing. So if you hit a button in the middle of their program sequence, it's going to take it out of whack. It's not going to uh, know how to respond. It's not going to give you the end result that you were desiring. So let's take that off by hitting it again and it's going to return you and this is why I let them do that it returns you to the background mode so you don't have to worry about stacking your keyers and turning them on and off you can build up to that and play around with it and that's really the best way you get uh, really competent at this is just playing around with it and learning it experimenting you know jump in on here ask if you want to jump in sometime and, and, and just you know experiment turning sources on and off taking keys on and off seeing how they work if you want to assign different things to different keyers up here you can do all of that keyer priority lets you change the stacking order so if I hit key priority I can either use the mouse and, and do it over there which is probably easiest or I can come over here and change it and go six five four three two one I, I, and I just hit them and they move up and down depending upon you know, what I'm hitting and how high I want to go with it. I'm going to reset using my reset setup right here. That's the way I want it. That's good. Turn keyer priority off. Another important thing to show you is that if I don't have anything selected over here, 
I could ready a source, ready camera two, take camera two, ready camera three, take camera three, ready camera one, take camera one. What's happening? It's not coming up. That's because I didn't tell it what to do. I've got to tell it what to do. That's a background change that I want to have happen. I want a ready background on camera one, camera two, take camera two, ready camera one, take camera one, ready camera three, dissolve camera three. Again, this is my preview hand. This is my action hand, the right hand. So I'm making it happen with the right. I'm getting it ready with the left. So it brings now a good point to talk about the direct keys. Direct keys pop on these six keyers immediately. There's no, they bypass the preview window. So where would you want to do this? Well, you probably don't need to preview the bug, and the bug is the, the program graphic that goes in the corner during a broadcast. You, you know what it looks like. It's a sign. You know it's there. It says bug right here. You don't need to preview it. You can just bring it up. There it is. If I need to quickly get something off the air, say that something happened and, and there's a mistake or something and it's a keyable source, I need to quickly just get it off. I don't want to finagle with over here. I know I'm good with background. I can just cut it off over here. And you can do more than one at a time. So I can go together. See, I've got the bug and, and the lower thirds background. I could do all of that with the name CG at the same time. So if I want to add that channel of CG, now I could take my two hands here and cut them all off together. But that gets complex to do that that way. You know, so we, we usually leave the bug on. But even to do these two, I need two hands, see? Or one hand with two fingers. And if I don't quite get it, see now it looks sloppy because it's delayed. So we take care of all that using the memories and the macros up here. Um, to explain this a little bit better for you, this might make more sense. Think about a box shot where you have an over-the-shoulder graphic that you want to introduce to viewers at home. Um, you might have, say, uh, we'll say the PTZ camera on deck. And we want to have that box shot next. So um, we take that on the air. Camera operator is going to adjust when we bring in the box. So we need to first have the graphics person send the correct graphics file that goes on top of the generic background for the over the shoulder graphic. And then once they've done that, based on the rundown in the script, it'll send that file over. Then they can simply send OTS, the over the shoulder graphic. That memory here will set it up. Puts it into preview so that the camera operator can make sure that they are lining themselves up correctly. And then when it's ready to move on air, you hit that again, and now it's going to move on air. And there it is. And it looks very nice. Again, when I'm ready for it to go out, I can tell it to take it out. One of the properties, just like we had auto start, auto rewind, auto stop with the clips, this one has a, a loop point set. So it's got a, a very specific point because it's all one file that has the animation for the intro. But if I want to get a seamless loop, I can't have the, the animation for the intro where it comes on the screen happening every time. You're going to see that cut like that. It's going to be a jump cut. So how do I avoid that? I tell it that once that's loaded at that particular time, that becomes the loop point. So then when it plays to the end of the file, it goes back to only this point, not the very beginning. And it loops within this region. If you think of it in your timeline in Premiere or, or you know, Final Cut, whatever program you're using to edit, it's only going to be a specific region. So that's the power of the production switcher. And that's why so much of this has to get set up ahead of time. Um, that's why there's always practice involved. Whenever a station goes to a new look, they practice with their new graphics. They practice with all that outside of the broadcast you see at home so that they're very familiar with how it responds and how it works with all of their uh, integration. So to get rid of that, I would simply hit that off. And see, now it goes away. So let's say I want to bring it in and I want to have the background change with it. So I want to have maybe the jib shot. And so I've got my jib shot ready. I want to have my key source one there. There's my, and I want to have my animation. I know that that's assigned to five. So I have that there. Now when I hit cut and move that over, both the camera 
and the graphics along with the background animation for the graphics are going to happen and play back simultaneously. Cut. These two are on air. That changed. See? If I want to remove just the graphic, I turn off the background, cut it away, and now that camera could recompose their shot if they wanted to. Likewise, if I just want to introduce that on the camera and I'm happy with the camera that's selected and currently on air, I just put keyers 1 and 5 on, move it over, and there it is. And I can mix it off if I want. So I can wipe it on if, if I want. And if I want to mix, I could just and dissolve it out. So that's the powerful nature of keyers. Remember to turn them off and then get into background mode. They're additive. So I just can keep adding and I just hit it again to turn it off. Once to turn it on, again to turn it off. And I can have as many on at a time as I want. One of the neat features you can do is, let's say you're using the in-show monitor and this is what happens a lot of times. Let's say we want to build a weather graphic within that monitor. So how do we do that? Well, we come up here and we go to our background and we know we want to send the animated background and I'm not sending the right background I can see it here but that's not the background I want so what do I do I come over here to clips 2 because that's where I'm pulling it from and I see I've got the weather background here that's the one I want so I'm going to select it down here here it is now I have moved that to the placeholder there for clips 2 it's on deck but I'm not done yet I need to add my graphics. So the graphics operator has to send over the correct weather, weather data. So there it is. There's my seven day. I need to stack that on top. So to get it on top, I'm going to engage Keyer 1. Preview it. Now that looks good. I'm going to cut that on. And now that I've cut that on, I'm going to tell it to play back there. And now that that's moving, if I were to look at the jib shot, you can see that it's actually playing back there. So there's that graphic. So say you had that in your monitor on set, you're good to go, but maybe the viewers at home want to see that too. So at some point your presenter is going to want to transition to that full screen so that the viewers at home can get a better look. It's a way to go instead of just a split cut and a hard cut. It gets it from here to there a little bit um, in stages and it looks a little bit more uh, polished. It has a, that, that nicer bit of finesse to it. So how do we do that? Ah. We can take all of this that we're building up here on this section down here on air for the viewers at home using the ME1 preview program. Same thing. So if I preview that, I'm now previewing that whole stack. If I want to make a change with that graphic and send maybe the blue background instead of the weather background, there it is there. And see now it changed not only on the monitor, but on what I'm about to send at home. So if I change it back to the weather one, then I can dissolve that and bring it up for the viewers at home. And notice my bug, because that's a sign down here, not up here, stays over top of it and it's only on the monitor that's showing me what's going at home. Notice there's no bug on what's being fed to the monitor on the set because I only want that for the viewers at home. And in this case, I would probably actually cut it off so that you don't have it covering over the graphic. A uh, good design won't have that, that problem if you want it on for that. I, we won't typically have it on for this. So that's how the mixed effects works. Say uh, I want to get out of this now. I want to cut that off. Here's the beauty of that. One button. I've cut it off. I have time to build it up here without having to worry about messing with it here on the fly. That's what's nice also about the mixed effects. It gives you that element of time to get it ready. You just have to be cognizant of what's going on down here on air as well as taking the time to build it. And you work up to that as you get more experience with the unit and get more comfortable behind it. Remember keyers and the sources that are feeding those keys. Mixed effects, your monitor on the set. Come down here, these are the macros. So let's say we want to send um, the radar as our background. We'll dissolve to that. And let's do our credit roll over that. So graphics needs to send the correct credits and then we hit credits and it brings them in. And then all they have to do is just page through because remember it's an open channel of CG. And we come down to the end 
and then I could use my fade to black here and where that's a great thing to do I can then get rid of it underneath so I come up on camera one out of that with everything clear it's a great way to set up and reset in between if you don't want somebody down program to see what you're working on in the studio if you have like a master control or something and you're afraid they could take you on by accident you could build everything with a fade to black on until you're actually ready for the show and then just turn it off to reveal everything here another use for that we also have black down here as a preview and program source just for a starting point again remember the play it'll tell you if it's paused like we got credits in a pause state so I need to take that off now it's stopped and because I took it off manually it's, it's opposite it's like those TV remotes when you're at home and you're using your your Xfinity remote and you've got it synced to your TV as well as your DVR and your box and everything you hit that and you turn off the TV manually now you're out of sync you turn that again you're gonna hit the one's gonna come on the other one's gonna go off or vice versa so we just got great use for the direct keys that's how you get rid of that and get and, and fix but remember that's not going to help you if you have a key source controlled over here you got to manually then turn it off but it'll at least get it off air so it's not on there longer than it needs to be if it's a mistake so for instance up here I could turn this off but notice I still have key or one selected I need to get out of key or one now I'm back in the background mode again remember memories over here bring up your two box shot control and whatever else we want to program there right now that's what I'm using it for for you guys a great use for the touchscreen here would be for your clip bank um, you've got your your two box set up here and I want to keep that here because maybe I'm going to go to that at some point in my show so that's great but if I also want to make sure that the clips are doing what they're supposed to be doing and previewing the right sources at the right times I can monitor them here because if I hit this down here notice it's going to correspond up here with the pics pad and it's going to show me what I'm working on up here so I need to be down here with it and then I can reference here so let's take a look at the clips if I go to my weather and I preview that notice it sent it preview it take it on the air one camera two underneath it it's gonna auto advance to the next one sports notice it moved me right into my uh, previewed source because it has an auto transition applied to it so I didn't have to touch anything at the end of that segment it moved right into my next source that was underneath and if I go to clip for instance and I say uh, I see that it's AXRT the T is transition and the T plus that's in this case there that means it's going to do the white pattern so if I want just the mix or the cut I need to, to take the plus off so let's go back to weather and let's do the controls here and I'm going to say auto transition that turns it off once is all I need and I'm going to go to up go to sports set that up same way controls auto transition T only now you'll see what will happen so again I want to be in memory here because I'm getting my box shot ready for later in the show so I'm going to control it up here I'm going to go to weather click on that it's up there I'm going to roll it and it's going to take my next shot after that hands are off there it is and sports is ready notice it's got a little bit of black to it so I would have to fix that on the clip itself to really get a nice seamless or, or mark a, uh, an out point on it so now if I hit it again and hit that segment it's going to do the same thing I can change my camera underneath hands are off and when it's done it's actually going to move right to that next source and again these have a little bit of a pad because they have a, an alpha channel with them so I, I probably don't need it on, on the way these are designed so I could probably clean that up and fix that and it would be really really slick it's really hot, handy for packages but while we're on the subject of packages let's talk about how to roll them so if I come over here and I want to ready my uh, open as a package what I need to do is I need to do that from up here where it says package start because notice I have a clock down here that's just ticking 
this macro up here is going to not only reset the clock first and put it in preview, but then when I hit it up here again, it's going to take it on air and start the clock. That way the director can see how much time is in the package. The TD doesn't have to worry because if the auto transitions on, it's going to come back to whatever source is in preview. So all they have to do is worry about getting the next camera queued up. But the person operating the graphics needs to know who's getting tagged at what time because they didn't necessarily create that piece. So therefore the editors have given them a list of who gets tagged and who they are and the only way they know who they are is by the timestamp. So that clock needs to correspond and it needs to be started at the start of the package. And that's what this macro does. So if we hit that, watch what happens with the clock. It resets. It's now loaded into preview. I hit it one more time. It's going to move over and we're going to see our show open. And all I have to do is preview my next camera underneath. And we'll go to that. And notice I've given it an effect where it has a cut point, but it keeps playing. So we can have the music faded out manually. That clip is still playing, but we don't see it. Now it's going to move to the rejoin. See, rejoins on deck. I saw it move here, so I'm good to go. I have a talking head, ready camera one, take camera one, ready camera two, take camera two. If I have my bug up, I can have that up. Ready camera three, take camera three. And it's time for that package, so I'm going to do my rejoin, ready that. And I just uh, come over here. Notice my clock is still going. I don't even have to ready it technically. I could just stay, if I know my next camera after that's going to be camera one, I could simply say, let's ready that package and then play it back. Current OC continues. And there's my package. And at the end of it, it's going to automatically go to camera one. And I can pause it. I can do all my controls from here if I want. If I want to ready camera two, auto dissolve it to camera two. Ready the PTZ. Ready here. And here you're going to see that the readies are orange because that's the default for this particular console. But that's the gist of, of how this all works. And the only thing I didn't show you was DVEs. And where a DVE comes in is the panel up here. So for instance, that two box setup, when I built that, what I did was I came up here, turned on, I hit this key here to select it, and then I turned the DVE on and off. If I have it off, it's full screen, see? If I have it on, I'm telling it where to go. See how that works? I can now move it around with the joystick and kind of position it. I can make it bigger, smaller. You know, I could, I could crop it if I want to go into crop here. I could crop it and, and, and I'll bring it bigger here and then I can just do a left crop using my knobs. And that's how we formatted these two windows. But that's called a DVE. It's a digital video effect and it's controlling that source on top of uh, another layer. So that's what all of this is up here. It's your DVEs. If I want to control the hyperdeck, I come into here, deck controlled. And down here I have the control of top or bottom. Well I know top is the recorder because it's labeled R for record. To the bottom is the one that has the cartridge loaded. And then I could play it back and select it if that's what I wanted to do. And if I want to control it, player controls up here, it's the same thing. Because I'm in direct, I'm in the uh, deck controls. And I can actually see the file names that are on that solid state drive and hit play if I want and there it is. So I can rewind it, hit play and it's that simple. So you always want to check your setup, make sure you're in the setup and get comfortable with things, know your monitors, know where you are with your PIX pad over here. You can page through your sources See what all you're working with. I have two of those up so the graphics, if they want to take control of some of the stills, they can help you out with that and send some of that for you. Or you can do it here yourself if you, if you want. It's all touchscreen. 
And that's pretty much the gist of the production switcher. There's a lot more to it, but that's a good overview of how to use the console.